ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಕನ್ನಡ ರಾಜ್ಯೋತ್ಸವದ ಹಾರ್ದಿಕ ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳು ಬಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿಶಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಬೆನ್ನೂರ್ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಐ ಕ್ಯೂ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಲೆಟ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಅಫೇರ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ಟೋಬರ್ ಮಂತ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ನೋ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಕ್ಯೂ ಸೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಪೆನ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪೆನ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಲಾಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಅಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಐ ಕ್ಯೂ before starting this lecture i would like to thank each and every one who who have given encouraging comments on my previous videos thank you very much in this video let us cover the karnataka state current affairs of all these sectors health education environment and ecology science and technology economy new appointment agriculture and the steps taken up by karnataka state government karnataka government initiatives Here is the first news and this news makes us feel proud. She is Geeta Gopinath. She is from Mysore. Recently, Mysore girl Geeta Gopinath was appointed as Economic Counselor and Director of IMF's Research Department. IMF is International Monetary Fund. See, here is the logo. It comes under United Nations. The parent organization of IMF is United Nations. I'll give more details about this IMF in the next slide. but before that i'll introduce geeta gopinath geeta gopinath was brought up in mysuru she received her phd in economics from princeton university in 2001 and she earned ba degree from university of delhi and ma degrees from both delhi school of economics and university of washington the most important point is geeta gopinath is the first woman to hold the position at international monetary fund she is the first woman and she is the second indian to hold the position at imf then who is the first indian our former rbi governor raghuram rajan he was the sole indian to hold the coveted post at imf now geeta gopinath became the second indian to hold the post at imf raghuram rajan was also the governor of reserve bank of india he was the 23rd governor of reserve bank of india he served from 2013 till 2016 okay here is the more information uh, about international monetary fund i have already said the parent organization is united nations the headquarters of international monetary fund is at washington dc imf is an organization of 189 countries imf promotes global financial stability IMF encourages international trade and it aims to reduce the poverty. Here is the next news on leopards. Panthera pardus is the scientific name of this leopard. Recently, Nature Conservation Foundation and Karnataka State Forest Department conducted census in Karnataka state. That census report says that there are 2500 leopards in Karnataka state prior to this there were only 1129 leopards in the state now the leopard population has increased the number of leopards in the state has almost doubled there are 2500 leopards in Karnataka state according to the 2018 census report this census was conducted by nature conservation foundation here is an information about this nature conservation foundation the headquarters is located at mysuru and this nature conservation foundation is a non governmental wildlife conservation and research organization based in mysuru and they promote use of science for wildlife conservation in india remember the scientific name of this leopard panthera pardus is the scientific name the most interesting point about this leopard is then leopard's night vision is 6 to 8 times better than that of humans here is the next news on bandipura national park protest is going on here by the activists but why are they protesting what's the reason let's understand see this bandipura national park is the most reputed national park of india and this was established in 1974 as a tiger reserve 
there are good number of elephants and tigers in this national park now this ministry of road transport and highways government of india is planning to construct an elevated highway through this bandipura national park this has posed the problem government wants to develop five stretches of 1 km of elevated roads and please observe this map nh 766 this highway passes through the bandipura national park national highway number 766 passes through bandipura national park and this highway connects kerala and karnataka due to rapid rise in the traffic of vehicles in this highway many wild animals died especially at night hence vehicles are not allowed here from 9 pm till 6 am in the morning vehicles are not allowed on this highway so that wild animals can move freely at night this is one good preventive measure taken by the concerned authority but now the government wants to ensure 24 into 7 movement of vehicles without disturbing the movement of wild animals at night government is planning to construct elevated highway please observe this image here i am trying to show an elevated highway government is planning to construct an elevated highway through this bandipura national park so that both vehicles and wild animals can move vehicles move on these elevated highways and wild animals move below the elevated highways but the activists are protesting against the proposal of the government activists say that bandipura national park is the prime elephant and tiger habitat it's a biodiversity hotspot road construction through this national park may disturb the wildlife here it destroys the biodiversity because to construct road we have to clear the area by cutting down many trees this project will definitely destroy the flora and fauna here that is why the activists are protesting the next news is on illegal sand mining Before having a look at that news let's recall some basics this topic is very important hence i'll cover it in detail how this sand is formed sand is formed by withering of rocks we mine the sand and use it for various purposes sand mining is extraction of sand through an open pit sometimes sand is mined from inland dunes from oceans from river beds beaches also the mine owners dig out as much sand as possible through illegal means in pre monsoon months illegal sand mining is nothing but the result of rapid urbanization building infrastructure this illegal sand mining is defined under section 3 of mines and mineral development and regulation act 1957 MMDR act please remember this this law has been implemented by government to prevent illegal mining use of sand see sand is mixed with cement and gravel and this mixture is used for construction purposes in sand mining they extract minerals such as rutile ilmenite zircon which contains useful elements titanium and zirconium Geological Survey of India which is headquartered at Kolkata says that river bed mining causes lot of alterations to the physical characteristics of both river and river bed okay the sand what we are extracting now from the river side was formed millions of years ago and now we are at the stage where river sand may no may no longer be available okay we are already losing the biodiversity and this extraction of sand will further destroy the biodiversity the news is that this illegal sand mining in sarjapur area of bengaluru is destroying the environment illegal sand mining has become rampant means uncontrolled in 1960s there were 200 80 lakes and tra- tanks in bengaluru there were 280 lakes and tanks now bengaluru lakes are in miserable condition reasons are encroachment illegal construction mining and people are neglecting these natural resources lakes are the natural resources abject neglect towards the lakes is the main cause lakes are at the edge of extinction due to illegal construction now coming to this sarjapur area of bengaluru there are 
documented lakes in the Sarjapur area. And Dodkere Lake is the largest lake. It covers 204 acres. Illegal sand mining is going on here. And the protesters are protesting against this illegal sand mining. Dodkere Lake needs an urgent attention by the government. Concerned authorities have to look into this matter and, and they have to resolve. Here I'll explain impact of illegal sand mining on environment. Illegal sand mining affects infiltration. What is this infiltration? Please observe this image. Water on the ground surface enters the soil. This is called infiltration. Water on the ground surface enters the soil. This process is called as infiltration. Illegal sand mining affects infiltration. Second point is it kills flora and fauna. Illegal sand mining kills flora and fauna. See, if we keep on digging the lake and mine sand out of it, it will kill the lake. It will also kill the flora and fauna there. Now the question is how to protect the lakes? See, lakes are living entities. It is impossible to create new lakes everywhere. Both people and government should understand this. But the government machinery is failing in protecting the lakes. Government should control sand mining. Both locals and the local government should rejuvenate the lakes. Lake rejuvenation is very important. Since we are talking about lake rejuvenation, I would like to remind one recent best example. Actor Yash through his Yashomaga Foundation and local residents saved Tallur Lake in Koppal district and created awareness about lake rejuvenation. Locals should protect their lakes by rejuvenating them and they should keep the lakes clean. Government should also take measures to protect the lakes. Okay, we studied in detail about the lakes and their importance and the news is illegal sand mining is going on in Sarjapur area of Bengaluru and that should be stopped by the concerned authorities soon. Okay, now let's move to the next news. Kodugu Development Authority was formed. See, we all know that Kodugu was hit by destructive floods and many lost their home and properties in this natural calamity. Recently, Chief Minister Kumaraswamy met the victims in Kodugu and interacted with them. The objective of the interaction program was to infuse confidence among the victims and elicit their views and expectations from the authorities. There, that is in Kodugu, Chief Minister announced the formation of Kodugu Development Authority. This authority will reconstruct the Kodugu district. And the chairman of this Kodugu Development Authority will be the Chief Minister. In this interaction program, Chief Minister said that educational expenses of affected children will be entirely borne by the government and emphasis will also be given on the restoration of schools and colleges because many schools and colleges in this Kodugu district were damaged during the natural calamity. So emphasis will be given on the restoration of schools and colleges also. Emphasis will also be given on the restoration of farmland including plantations. Plantation crops are grown here in Kodugu district. For the restoration of this farmland, staff from other districts will be deployed or posted to the agriculture and horticulture departments. Nearly 800 families lost their houses and properties in this natural calamity in Kodugu district. So government is going to release 10,000 rupees per month towards house rentals. This 10,000 rupees will be given to all the 800 families per family 10,000 rupees per month towards house rentals. This is the temporary measure and each family that has lost its property will receive 8.53 lakh as compensation and reconstruction of houses will be taken up quickly by the government. Okay, these are the important points discussed in this interaction program. CM said that he will visit the district again to review the rehabilitation. Here you have to remember that Kodugu Development Authority uh, will reconstruct the Kodugu district and the chairman of this Kodugu Development Authority will be the chief minister. Next news is about Bellandur Lake. Bellandur Lake is the largest lake in Bengaluru. Observe the froth in this image. How this froth is formed here? 
raw sewage flows into this belandur lake and this raw sewage brings heavy metals and froth inducing phosphorus phosphorus induces froth and coliforms and other microbes are also found here coliforms are the type of bacteria rod shaped bacteria all the microorganisms harmful microorganisms are found here in this belandur lake this lake has become a breeding ground for harmful bacteria breeding ground means bacteria multiply very fast here the conditions are very suitable for bacterial multiplication here there are different strain and to kill bacteria antibiotics are used it's a drug anti uh, antibiotic is antimicrobial substance this antibiotic will kill the bacteria or it inhibits the growth of bacteria recently a study was conducted on bacteria collected from this belandur lake and that study has revealed that bacteria have developed resistance against more number of antibiotics this should not happen this is dangerous to human health bacteria are becoming strong by acquiring resistance against different antibiotics antibiotics are the drugs used against bacteria used to kill bacteria bacteria of belandur lake have become resistant against 51 antibiotics now the researchers have to develop new antibiotics to kill bacteria or else it becomes difficult to save the patient suffering from bacterial infection this is an image of bacteria an antibiotic is used to kill the bacteria next important news is about the use of renewable energy in indian railways railways has started experimenting with solar technology this is mainly to reduce the electricity bill and here is the piece of information please note down these two important points the first point is indian railways on july 14th launched first solar powered demu train demu stands for diesel electrical multiple unit train from saftarjung railway station in delhi here they installed 16 solar panels on the rooftop and these solar panels were manufactured under make in india initiative second most important point is which is the first railway station in the country to be fully solar powered that is guwahati railway station in this image we are seeing guwahati railway station guwahati is the capital of assam guwahati railway station is the first railway station in the country to be fully solar powered in karnataka state railway department has installed large number of solar panels at hospet railway station and also at mysore railway station at hospet railway station this hospet railway station falls under hubballi railway division here the department has been generating 100 kilowatts of power cutting down the power bill by 70% rooftops at hospet and mysore railways are filled with solar panels you can see in this image now the railway department may soon go solar at three bengaluru stations officials from bengaluru division are planning to use the station premises to generate solar power there are three main railway stations in the city and they have sufficient space also this will save the railway lot of money at least 50% of what they are paying now okay we studied about the current affairs of environment and ecology sector here are two questions please pause the video and try to answer who is the karnataka state minister uh, of forest ecology and environment department answer is r shankar here is the next question who is the current union railway minister piyush goel okay, let's move to the current affair of education sector here is the next news tribal dalit study center set up at krishna devaraya university at ballari tribal people are also called as adivasis they live in the forest and mountain areas and dalits are the oppressed people in the society both tribal people and dalits are socio economically backward 
Our Indian constitution has given special privileges to these people to empower them for their socio-economic upliftment. And there are study centers, tribal and Dalit study centers in various universities across India. Now the new tribal Dalit study centers set up at Krishna Devara University at Ballari. These study centers study tribal and Dalit issues, their unique culture, they have their own culture, their own language, customs, food habits, they celebrate their festivals in their own way and they perform folk dances and sing folk songs. These study centers concentrate on the life, they focus on the life of the tribals and Dalit people and they study the issues of these tribal and Dalit people. This Ramanika Gupta Center for Tribal and Dalit Literary Studies and Development has been established at Vijayanagara Shri Krishna Devaraya Universities and a fund of 5 lakh rupees has been donated by Ramanika Trust for the purpose. This Ramanika Foundation is a non-profit and non-political secular organization. It provides platform for the unheard voices of tribals, Dalits and women and other minority Indians. Here is the news about investment in Karnataka state. See, more investment leads to economic growth. Karnataka remains on top in the proposed investments. And this is for the third time Karnataka is on the top position. Recently, Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion released a data, investment intention data. And according to this data, Gujarat state has garnered 51,586 crore and Karnataka state has garnered 79,866 crore. Now let's study about Karnataka state government initiatives. Before that, pause the video and try to answer these two questions. Who is the current Karnataka Minister of Social Welfare and who is the Rural Development Minister? Priyank Kharge, Social Welfare Minister and he is Krishna Bhaire Gauda, Rural Development Minister. Here is the most important news. Karnataka State Government launched new scheme. Name of that scheme is Samruddhi. It's a rural entrepreneurship program for SCST youth. This scheme was launched in October 2018. It's a rural employment and skill development program. Here the government will partner with the private companies and provide training free of cost to SCST youth in rural areas. Already 62 to 65 companies have agreed. Companies like Big Basket, Swiggy, Bata, Ola, Uber, Paragon, these companies have already agreed. But how these companies are benefited by collaborating with the government? See, over the year, companies will get newly trained, highly skilled employees. So now the government and these companies together, they provide training to the rural SCST youth. With this Samruddhi scheme, government is hoping to create 10,000 SCST rural entrepreneurs over the next three years. This will help in building a stronger economy in rural areas and this will ensure equitable and sustainable development. Now how to apply? There is a website, Kalyana Kendra website. This Kalyana Kendra is the control room to address the concerns of Karnataka Social Welfare Ministry's beneficiaries. Interested candidates can apply for the Samruddhi scheme between November 7 till 30th through the forms available on this Kalyana Kendra website. Now to start their own outlet, applicants will be scanned on the basis of their qualifications. They must have passed SSLC at least. Minimum age limit is 21. Government will also invest in training through ITIs, vocational training and other institutions. I have already said government is investing 800 crore in this Samruddhi scheme. We studied about Samruddhi scheme. Karnataka state government has launched another scheme known as Unnati scheme. Both Samruddhi scheme and Unnati schemes are for the SCST youth. In case of Samruddhi scheme, government 
collaborates with the private companies and trains SCST youth and converts them into skilled employees or entrepreneurs also. But in case of Unnati scheme, government promotes innovation. Unnati scheme promotes youth who come up with technology-based solutions to the social problems. The most important point is here. Department will provide up to 50 lakh rupees to the winning entrepreneurs to develop tech-based solutions that are innovative, novel, novel means new and have meaningful social impact. Department of Social Welfare has launched this Unnati scheme to foster entrepreneurs working on rural and social impact technologies. This is the important point. Unnati scheme fosters entrepreneurs working on rural and social impact technologies and the department, social welfare department will invest up to 20 crore rupees to create end-to-end -end support infrastructure for startups and entrepreneurs from marginalized background. There are many youth, SCST youth who have innovative ideas but they don't have money to invest. Government will identify and promote such young talents through this Unnati scheme. There are two streams of Unnati. The first stream of Unnati is technology innovation and the second stream of Unnati is social impact. See Unnati will identify companies that are working on the products and solutions for problems that are plaguing both society and also the government. To become a beneficiary of this Unnati scheme, one should develop innovative technology that has social impact. Here is the difference between Samruddhi scheme and Unnati scheme. Through this Samruddhi scheme, government trains youth. Government partners with private companies and trains young SCST youth and converts them into skilled employees or entrepreneurs. In case of Unnati scheme, government promotes innovative ideas, novel ideas, technology-based solutions. Unnati scheme has technology skill training at its core, targeting social innovation. This is the main difference. There is one more scheme known as Airavata scheme. This Airavata scheme was launched in September 2018 by Karnataka state government. This Airavata scheme will create more self-employment opportunities and boost livelihood options for rural and semi-urban youth. This is also targeted especially at the young men and women of SCST communities. We studied about Samruddhi scheme, Unnati scheme and Airavata scheme. All, the, all these three schemes are very important. These schemes are launched by Karnataka state government. Now let's move to the next news. Here is the news about the campaign launched by the journalists to unite the society and also about one major project. Rupees 198 crore drinking water project cleared for Ullal. Ullal is in Dakshina Kannada district of Karnataka. In the month of October, Karnataka state government has cleared Rs. 198 crore drinking water project proposal for Ullal, which is in Dakshina Kannada district. CM launched Brand Mangaluru campaign. This bang, Brand Mangaluru campaign is taken up by Dakshina Kannada Working Journalists Union. This is for uniting society and highlighting positive aspects of this coastal belt. This campaign projects the true abilities and positive aspects of Mangaluru. See, after launching this brand Mangaluru campaign, Chief Minister said that Mangaluru city has the potential to grow on par with Bengaluru in terms of economic activity and development. Many youngsters from this coastal belt work hard in the cities and towns both within the country and outside the country. They contribute to the economic growth of those cities. But if the resources available in the coastal belt are used properly, they could stay back for the development of the coastal region. That is, migration will be reduced or minimized. Here we need to remember Dakshina Kannada Working Journalists Union has taken up this brand Mangaluru campaign to project the true abilities and positive aspects of Mangaluru. Next news is about Raichur power plant. Before that, let's recall some basics. See, power is necessary for household purpose, to run factories, for agriculture purpose and all. This power is generated by various means. 
by using solar energy solar power generation wind power generation waves power generation hydro power generation even coal is used to generate power there's a huge shortage of coal in karnataka state coal is supplied from other states to karnataka and the power from the coal is generated at raichur thermal power station this is located at shakti nagar in raichur district it uses coal to generate electricity and please remember this is the first thermal power plant to be set up in karnataka state it is operated by karnataka power corporation limited this accounts for 40% of the total electricity generated in karnataka as already mentioned this thermal power station uses coal for the generation of electricity its daily requirement is 27000 metric tons when running at full capacity and this coal 27000 metric tons of coal is delivered from nagpur based western coal fields limited and also mahanadi coal fields limited now because of the massive shortage of coal operations at two thermal power stations that contribute majority of power for karnataka have been partially shut down the scale of shortage of coal is pegged at over 50% there is a 50% shortage of coal here so raichur thermal power station at shakti nagar has shut down four units karnataka is home to some biggest industries software industry power shortage will affect the industries power shortage will also affect over 40 million farming communities and the smaller cities because electricity will be supplied only for few hours a day in smaller cities now because of this power shortage chief minister wrote a letter to piyush goel who is the union minister for railways and coal in that letter chief minister has expressed concern over the shortage of coal supply to the state state's thermal power plant 40% of the required electricity is generated using coal and this coal uh, comes from other states so it's better to increase the capacity of solar power generation so that such problems can be avoided in future we are all familiar with online shopping almost all the items are sold online now how if the liquor is sold online Recently there was a news that Maharashtra government was planning to start home delivery of liquor but later government received criticism so Maharashtra government took back its decision now Karnataka mills framing law to sell liquor online Karnataka government is thinking deeply to frame a law to sell liquor online see there are two benefits to the state government here first benefit is if this law is implemented if if the liquor is sold online state excise department's revenue will increase and the second benefit is this will reduce the number of cases of drunk and drive in karnataka state so government is still thinking it has uh, not approved this law government is thinking to frame a law to sell liquor online Let's move to the agriculture sector now. International Trade Fair of Organics and Millet Crops is going to be held at Bengaluru Palace from Jan 19 till Jan 21st and this international trade fair will be inaugurated by Chief Minister HD Kumaraswamy. See millets are the small seeded grains these are the cereal crops and organics means see the organic agriculture products are safe organic means here the chemical fertilizers and pesticides are not used to grow a crop instead of using chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides farmers use bio fertilizers and bio pesticides to to grow a crop so the crop yield is increased by using eco friendly measures here since the chemicals are not used to grow a crop these agriculture products organic agriculture products are safe to the environment also because soil is not contaminated with chemicals here and organic foods are safe good for human health also now this international trade fair is organized by department of agriculture government of karnataka in collaboration with kappec as a nodal agency international competence center of organic agriculture as knowledge partner and mca as 
event partner this is the photo of agriculture fair here i'm just trying to show how the agriculture fair will be it's a meeting place for agriculture companies farmers and the buyers now in bengaluru international level trade fair will be held in january this international trade fair of organics and millets this particular event will feature a world class exhibition from leading companies in organic agri business it will have the companies as well as the producers exhibiting wide range of organic products this international trade fair provide an important linkage with farmer groups and the market see in this international trade fair buyers of organic products meet the suppliers and the farmer groups and they negotiate real business they transact here international conference will be held here this particular trade fair international trade fair provides a platform to share knowledge eminent national and international speakers and delegates share their knowledge and latest developments with organic stakeholders policy makers government business then organic food courts the organizers of this international trade fair are planning to set up organic food courts in that trade fair they are aiming to create awareness about organic food and its relevance to food safety health and environment here you have to remember this trade fair is going to be held at bengaluru in 2019 from jan 19 till jan 21st here is the next news farmers grow a crop by investing his time energy and money farmers sometimes get money from money lenders or banks as a loan to to invest on agriculture sometimes his crop may fail due to natural calamities like flood or drought it's risky central government launched pradhanmantri fasal bhima yojana it's a crop insurance scheme farmers pay insurance premiums and in case of crop loss government provide compensation to such farmers through this fasal bhima yojana pradhanmantri fasal bhima yojana help farmers in case of crop loss but the farmers in many parts of karnataka state have failed to get the benefits of this pradhanmantri fasal bhima yojana within a stipulated time see farmers pay insurance premiums with the intention of getting benefits at the suitable time state government is planning to launch a separate insurance scheme this insurance scheme planned by karnataka state government would provide compensation to the farmers at the earliest Let's move to the next sector that is health sector. Here is an important information about colorectal cancer. CRC in short it is called as CRC colorectal cancer. This cancer affects the colon and the rectum. It may affect the entire large intestine or colon and the rectal part separately. Please observe this image. This is the colon and here is the rectum. This cancer is a formidable health problem worldwide. Colorectal cancer is the third most important, third most common cancer in men and second most common cancer in women. ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, Bengaluru, recorded second highest annual incidence rate for colorectal cancer after Tiruvannathapuram. Colorectal cancer was the seventh most common cancer to affect Indians but today it's the third most common cancer after lung cancer breast cancer and cervical cancers see cancer is becoming the second leading cause of death globally and bengaluru city doctors said that one in four young bengalurian is at risk of colorectal cancer but why bengalurians are at risk Bengaluru is a cosmopolitan city. The lifestyle is very busy here. Increased intake of fast food, lack of exercise, excessive alcohol, obesity, etc trigger colorectal cancer. Here are the preventive measures: limiting alcohol intake, quitting smoking, eating healthy, maintaining a normal weight, being active and getting screened on a regular basis, especially if one is about 45 years old these are the preventive measures here is the next news trade license still must for hospitals 
says Bengaluru Urban Development Department, that is BBMP. What is trade license? Trade license is a permit issued by a municipal corporation granting permission to a person or entity to carry on a particular business at a specific premise. Here in this case, BBMP issued trade license to establish hospitals in Bengaluru city. Every year, hospitals have to get their trade license renewed from BBMP. Hospital authorities have to pay 2,500 to 3,000 rupees depending on the hospital size and get their trade license renewed. Along with this, hospitals are required to get NOC. NOC is no objection certificate. Hospitals are required to get NOC from Pollution Control Board. Hospitals have to send data on diseases to BBMP, but hospital, many of the hospitals are not sending data on diseases to BBMP. Now, if they don't send, BBMP won't renew their license. Hospitals have to send a data on conditions like H1N1, Dengue, Chikungunya, Malaria, Cholera, Polio, Diphtheria, Tetanus and Tuberculosis. Let's move to the next sector that is Science and Technology. These are the images of Bengaluru city. Bengaluru is the capital city of Karnataka state and Bruhat Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike is the civic body, local governing body that governs this city. Bengaluru city is facing some civic issues like lake encroachment, illegal dumping of garbage and path holes on road. There are many such issues. Now BBMP has decided to use space technology. BBMP has decided to use the power of the space technology to deal with these civic issues. It is collaborating with ISRO to solve the city issues. BBMP becomes the first Indian civic body to use space technology. See, ISRO is Indian Space Research Organization. Its headquarters is at Bengaluru. It's a government agency. Its vision is to harness space technology for national development while pursuing space science research and planetary exploration. Here is how ISRO is going to help BBMP in solving the civic issues. There are totally 198 wards in Bengaluru city. Every six months, ISRO will send BBMP the pictures and data of geographical areas within BBMP wards from which BBMP can analyze the encroachment of government lands, violation of BBMP laws. BBMP can also identify if property owners have misled the BBMP in declaring the actual property dimensions in their assessments. For example, a person gets permission from BBMP to construct three-storied building by paying certain prescribed amount. But later, he may mislead the BBMP by constructing five-storied building, five or six-storied building. Now, ISRO will send BBMP pictures and data of geographical area, of that particular geographical area. So, it is not possible to mislead BBMP from now. This system that is using space technology to solve the civic issues. This particular system will be ready by December and this will be implemented from January 2019. This will bring about changes in tax generation, revenue, collection, etc. Plastic is banned in Karnataka state. Plastic was banned in 2016 itself. Plastic carry bags, plastic flex banners, Plates, plastic cups, plastic spoons are all banned. When it was banned in 2016, many community movements in HSR layout of Bengaluru, BMT layout of Bengaluru showed how to be plastic free. Those community movements showed how to be plastic free and later many corporates and restaurants have opted for sustainable packaging options. That is food packaging without using plastic. However, this plastic ban is not completely effective due to many loose ends. Now, BBMP, Bruhat Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike, has developed an in-house app for its health inspectors and medical officers to levy fine on those found to be using banned plastic items. They will be given handheld devices. Health inspectors will be given ha handheld devices and this app, in-house app, will help the health department officials to levy fines on the spot. 
they will be able to take a photo of the banned item and app will generate a chalan online app will have a drop down option here is the drop down option this app will have a drop down option with the fines so that health officials need not use their discretion while while leaving the fines here is the next news state government is receiving many repeated complaints about the doctors not turning up for work doctors are not available in the government hospitals in duty hours so karnataka state government is planning to introduce aadhar based attendance system to check the absenteeism of doctors and paramedics this aadhar based attendance system will be introduced at both government medical colleges and government hospitals there are 16 government medical colleges in the state to which 25 hospitals are attached and more than 10000 staffers work in these medical institutes this aadhar based attendance system is mainly to monitor the attendance of permanent staff later it will be extended to cover outsourced staff or temporary staff as of now this system this aadhar based attendance system is mainly is introduced mainly to monitor the attendance of permanent staff initially five medical colleges will be chosen for pilot testing pilot testing means initially they experiment at small scale later they extend it for this pilot test fingerprint devices linked to unique identification authority of india ui dai database will be used aadhar number will be used here Okay, let's revise Mysore girl Geeta Gopinath appointed as new IMF chief International Monetary Fund chief and the leopard population in Karnataka state has increased it has almost doubled there are 2500 leopards in Karnataka state according to 2018 census and this census was conducted by Nature Conservation Foundation in Karnataka state forest department Illegal sand mining is going on in Sarjapur area of Bengaluru especially in Doddikere lake residents are protesting against this Kodugu development authority formed and the chairman of this authority will be the chief minister of the state Save Bandipura campaign picks up this campaign is against the road construction activists are opposing the construction of elevated roads through Bandipura national park because that destroys the biodiversity there drug resistant bacteria in bellandur lake bacteria collected from this bellandur lake have shown antibiotic resistance bacteria have shown resistance against 51 different antibiotics railway department may soon go solar at three bengaluru stations this is mainly to cut down the electricity bill Tribal Dalit Center opened at Krishna Devaraya University which is at Bellary and Karnataka remains on top for proposed investments and this is consecutively third time and this is good for the economic development of the state Coal shortage in Raichur power plant government launched Unnati and Samruddhi schemes and both these schemes generate employment Karnataka mulls framing law to sell liquor online International trade fair is going to be held at Bengaluru in January 2019. It's an international trade trade fair of organics and millets. Karnataka state government to start new crop insurance scheme. One in four Bengalurian at risk of colorectal cancer. Trade license is must for hospitals. Trade license is must to run hospital in Bengaluru, and BBMP becomes the first Indian civic body to use space technology. BBMP is collaborating with ISRO Indian Space Research Organization BBMP is collaborating with ISRO to solve the city issues using space technology and BBMP has developed an in-house app for its health inspectors and medical officers to levy fines on those found to be using banned plastic items and to check the absenteeism of doctors Karnataka state government is planning to introduce aadhar based attendance system these are the current affairs of karnataka october month 2018 thank you